So in this video, I'm going to show you how to mount up your suspension, all your A-arms and your trailing arms, how to mount your drive spool. So to assemble your A-arm, you're going to use these papers that shows you where each part goes. And this one's going to show you the dimensions. So you're just going to get the two pieces. And then you can just slip these legs right in the ends of these tubes. And make sure it's all flat. Make sure these, this is pushed in all the way. And you can measure this. And make sure you get it the right dimension. So the little heim joints in the end of here, and we're gonna need to drill a little hole so we can plug weld it on each, each side and weld it around here. We've got the holes in this, so we're gonna slip that in there, and now we can plug weld that. It holds this from bending back and forth inside there. Okay, so now we got our A-arms done. Now we're gonna mount them. So make sure you get the right A-arm. Okay, you're gonna barely lean forward, so whatever one is barely, whatever one the pivot point is closer to the front, that's which side it goes on. So we get our mounting point. Then come up here to the front and go to the start of this bend. So as far forward as I can go, I'm going to make a mark. And then I'm going to get a square. And get the top one. So I'm just going to hold this on my line. And then make sure this tab is straight on the frame. And I'm going to tack the top of it. On the back, I'm just gonna make sure it's the same as this one. Now this one's mounted. I'm just gonna do the same thing for the top side. I can test out our spindle in there. Now on these, before I weld them on, I put a washer inside of here. You see right there? So when I pull these off and powder coat the frame or paint it, then I'll have space to fit my himes back in. So after you get your front suspension all tacked on, then we go through and get the right geometry. Make sure all these angles are good. So you're gonna take your little angle block here. And you're gonna zero it on your frame. You can come over to this. Stick that on the side. And we can adjust these himes out until that goes to 90. And when you're checking these angles, and you want to make sure this is straight with the frame. So it's like not turned or something like that. It'll mess up your measurement. And make sure that's set at the right height. Whatever height you want your right height to be. Now we need to measure our caster and get it right. 
the angle between these two pivot points up here and down here needs to be six and a half degrees back. So I'm gonna get a piece of angle iron, put up up against the side of these two ball joints, and then I'll put my angle block on the side. I'm gonna zero it on the frame and put it on this and get it at six and a half degrees back. So now we got our front suspension all mounted up and tacked. Now we're gonna mount the shock. And you're gonna need these plates. Plates getting on the suspension like that. I'm gonna weld these in there. And this one goes up here. Uh, files for these plates are gonna be in the plans, or you can buy these off my website. Make sure you get it leveled from the ground. Use your little angle block and make sure the frame's level. And we're going to take our plate and we're going to tack it in there. So on the shock, I'm going to put a little tape around it right here so when I'm welding it doesn't get buried on this shaft. Well, I just got this is like almost as close as I could to the end, and I just tacked it on one side right here. And I'm gonna wait till I get this up here in place, and then I can tack both sides all the way. So now I'm just gonna tack this plate up in here. So this plate has a little bit of a curve on these edges, and it's so it can fit. So it's gonna go half on and half off like that. It's not gonna be sitting like this. It's gonna be sitting half in there. And so that it's level with our shock. Once you get that sitting right where you want it to, then you can come down here and make sure this is in line. These tabs are in line with the shock. And we can tack all the sides of that. And you're just gonna copy what you did on this side. You're gonna do the same thing over here. After you get them all tacked on there, we can test it and see if it's too stiff or if we need to adjust it at all. So that feels about perfect to me. Anything else I can just tune out in the shocks. So these little chunks on the A-arms, I'm just gonna space it about an eighth or a quarter from the end. And then when I'm tack it on, make sure it's all square. And the other one, I'm just gonna do it right at the start of the bend. This isn't really that big of a deal where you put it. You just need to have enough room for your bearing carrier. Now to get the back of this straight, I'm just gonna set this up on here, and then just square the back of it. So now I've got our trailing arm done. So I need to mount this hub now. Get your tabs set up on there and tightened where they're straight with each other. And I can just set this up on here. I'm gonna measure this. So I'm gonna run this about six and a half to the center of this hub. This is kind of variable. You can put it out or wherever you want. 
but I'm gonna do about six and a half to center. And I'm gonna match it on the other trailing arm. And you come down here and make sure these tabs are the same. So they're straight on each side. You don't want them angled or anything. Now I'm just gonna tack it on there. You don't wanna weld it all the way out until we get it most of the way done and we know it works. You might want to move it a little bit later. So we got this hub all tacked up on there. And now we can do the other side. This one's ready to mount. So for these tabs, mount your radius arms. So now we wanna give it a little bit of camber gain, so we're gonna mount these tabs angled a little bit out. So I'm gonna lean this sideways about a half inch. So that bolt's gonna move about a half inch. So to mount our spool, find the center of this and mark it. I'm gonna square this over to the other side. And then on our tabs, we're gonna also find the center of these. I'm gonna use my angle block to get this the right level. So to get the mounting points for our radius arms, then we're gonna have to draw a line from right where it mounts up here to the pivot point up here, through the center of the spool, and that'll give us this, the center between our radius rods. And the rod up here is going to give me my center point. So I got my marks. Now I'm just going to center this tab on that mark and tack it. And I did these five inches apart. Now you can make this bigger or smaller. It just de depends on how much camber gain you want. Because the more, the closer together these are, the more camber gain you're going to get. Okay, so we got our trailing arms, hooked them back up to our radius rods. Now mount the front of this. I'm gonna come up here and measure about inch and three quarter away from right here to the center of this. And I'm just gonna attack this. We're most likely gonna need to move it later when we're finishing up the suspension. But for now, we're just gonna attack it. And you mount this, you're gonna wanna have it up on a little bit of an angle like that so you can get your bolt in and out. Otherwise, you'll trap the bolt in there. Okay, now we've got our suspension mounted. We're gonna need to align the back tires with each other. Make sure they're straight with the frame. So you're gonna prop it up at whatever ride height you want. We're going to install the CV axle, bolt that in there. And then you want to make sure this isn't maxed out in either direction. So to make sure it has a little bit of give still, so it's not maxed out in either direction. And then this right here is just a little bar I made with some flat stock bolts on there. And I've got my laser right here set up. 
and line up with the center of the buggy. I'm just gonna take my measuring tape. Then you can get the measurement. Make sure it's the same on both sides. You wanna also make sure that this the hub is 90 degrees up and down. So you can get your angle block and zero it out in the frame. And you can stick it on your hub right there. It's like we're already right on 90. So this one should be all good. Now we're just gonna do that to the other side. So if this is out at all this way, you can try adjusting these. But if these aren't enough to get it, then go up to the front and you can adjust it a little bit on that pipe back and forth to get it right. Because if you only adjust these, then it can push this in too far. And you don't want to push this in too far to where it's maxing it out. You adjust these in as much as you can until this is getting too close. And then if you still need to go more, then you can adjust the front one. So you just need to adjust between these two to get it good. So if you get this in the right spot and you get all these aligned, then you can cut off the end of this pipe on an angle or whatever you want to and cap it off and weld it. That way it looks nicer. And once we got our tires all lined and everything packed in the right spots, then you can mount our suspension. So you're gonna want to mount up your tabs on your shocks. On the bottom, I'm gonna mount it right, right up against this tab for the hubs. We're just gonna get that on there to where it's flat and straight, and we're gonna tack it on. Make sure when you tack it on that you space this a little bit out from the frame so that you don't accidentally weld it in the wrong spot. Now you, this piece up here, you're gonna set it in right where it fits. And then you're just gonna wanna match the other side with it. Whatever you do one of these at, then you just wanna match the other side. So this tab up here on the top, I'm gonna slightly angle it back to try and match the, match the pivot point between these two joints, between the front one and this one right here. So I'm gonna try to match that. So it has that same plane going through this bolt. So if it was straight like this, then it could try to bind up right here. So you wanna make sure this pivot's lined up with those pivots down there. Now whenever you're welding by these shocks, you're gonna wanna cover up this shaft right here so it doesn't get berries on it. I kinda of forgot to on this one, but if you get a berry on that, it'll ruin your seals.